Okay. Um, good afternoon. At 1.46 p.m. today, we received a 911 call from First Coast High School. There was the, uh, the 911 call stated that there was a student inside of the school bathroom. He was in distress and that he was armed and potentially going to cause harm to um, some people in the school. Uh, we got the, dis the officers were immediately dispatched to the location and we linked up with school board who was on scene. There was an officer that was present at, at the uh, high school. They uh, formed a team, went inside, did a very, very thorough search and um, in each bathroom to make sure that there were no students in that bathroom to, to justify that call. Uh, further uh, officers arrived on scene, a, a lot of them at that time because we take these calls very, very seriously. So uh, we had multiple officers then make contact with the lieutenant on scene who gave direction and, and those officers also went into the school. At that time, there we never found a suspect. We were never able to um, verify that that actually occurred, that the, the call, the 911 call was, was valid in that regard. Uh, there were no students injured, nobody injured. And um, since then, the school has been uh, really, the students have been released as well as teachers and other faculty and another search has been um, done in the location and we did not find any suspect or anything of that nature. So um, I'm just going to release a little bit so that uh, the school board McMaster can talk and then I'll answer any questions after that. Like uh, Chief Easton said, we take these threats very seriously um, and we collaboratively work together uh, to ensure the safety of every student and every staff member of our uh, our school district. So, thank you. I'll take any questions. Can you tell us, were you given like a name of a student? Like, are there still efforts to try and track down whoever this person may have been? And did sure. We d he did give a name. However, at this time, the um, the name is not even panning out to be a student, even at that school, or even a real name at that time. However, we are taking those investigative efforts, and JSO will will take lead on on that and in our intelligence unit to further follow up that location and even even a phone number track trace that we're going to do as well. The fact that the call was made and all of this manpower was used, could there be criminal charges for the person making a false call? Oh, sure. Yeah, that's a, it's a felony when you do that. Um, as of right now, it, it appears to be a hoax, but either way, we always take these calls very, very seriously. We take them as real calls because especially when, when children are involved in schools, you know, in and, and this day and age. So, um, yeah, if we do find a suspect and we are going to do a thorough investigation, there could be criminal um, charges brought up on that person. And was it just that one call or were there multiple other calls as well from different It people? appears to be the same person that called twice. So um, the call seemed quite legitimate when we got it. So um, like I said, there was an upwards of probably 30 officers that arrived on scene within a matter of, of minutes after the 911 call was received at the comm center. How many people made the call? Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, is the person who made the call, are they in custody right now or detained in any? We have nobody in custody. At that time, when we went into the school, we never even found a suspect. We never found anything that would even, you know, back up the legitimacy of, of the call coming in. So, like I said, we checked the bathroom where he originally stated that he was located, and then we went and made sure all the classrooms and the students were, were okay. We don't have anybody in custody. I probably don't need to tell you guys this, but there were obviously a lot of rumors that were spreading almost immediately. We were hearing the same story from parents and friends and even some students that they left the school and somebody had been shot in the gym. That, sure. You know, maybe another person was shot as well. What, what advice can you offer to people in situations like these that are obviously very tense, everyone's worried about the safety of their kids, to not perpetuate uh, rumors like this? That right, and, and you're right. It, it does make our job more difficult, but we also understand when it, when our, when the children are involved, parents you know, their, their senses are going to be heightened. And we always try to tell the parents, look, let the police do their job. But we also understand that they're going to want to come to the location and make sure that their child is, is OK. Um, just like I think everything, when there's a chaotic situation, there's things that can perpetuate. And one person tells one person and the story grows bigger. And by the time I even got the call, I heard the exact same thing that you had had done. And so I called the district commander and and I said, look, you know, just keep me updated on what's going on, because that's only fair that we have to let the officers do their job as soon as they get there, because, you know, they're the ones that are going into the school. When when people flood the school and the calls and then, you know, it, it just grows and grows, it just makes their job even more difficult, because the last thing that we want to do is, God forbid, we, we have a situation or if this was a legitimate situation of a shooting and we have parents that self-deploy into the school, 
we're causing even more chaos for officers in a, in a very, very dangerous situation. So if we could maybe push pause and just let the officers do their job, then we're going to push it out as, as quick as possible to, to the media and, and the parents as well. Would you say some of those rumors maybe directed how large this response was? We heard from some students who used to come, come here and they said, you know, we've seen lockdowns, but nothing like this with the scale. I mean, when you hear people starting to say somebody shot in the school, I would imagine sure. you're sending everybody. I, honestly, if there is a remote threat of anything, if there is a suspicious person on school property with the potential of a gun, we're going to respond in this kind of manner because we're never going to, you know, take it for granted that something isn't happening. We want, I would rather a large response than a scaled back response because we're just assuming something. So yes, obviously when the call came in, it did sound legitimate. It sounded legitimate to the lieutenant that was working the scene that I talked to. And so that heightens even more and then the officers hear that on the radio so of course there's going to be a large-scale response in fact you know we had other um units in the detective division that heard it and they they responded which is outstanding you know so i mean we had a we had a very large-scale response to this location in a very very quick time i just want to clarify the timeline a little bit so 146 the call comes in correct um at that point when did the first officers and how many were there Show up. The call came in at 1.46 p.m. and first officer on scene was at 1.51 p.m. So, you know, um, you have to understand when you call 911, there's a little, little tiny lag to get to the comm center that would dispatch the officer. So five minutes is actually a really, really fast response, especially though we also had a um, school board officer that was actually present on scene. He had not received the call yet. We actually received the call before him. So um, as soon as we got to uh, time of arrival, there was probably about five officers that linked up with the school board officer. And then within a matter of probably one or two minutes, we had 20 officers that had arrived right after that. So in a matter of about six or seven minutes, we probably had about 25 officers on scene. And the call wasn't for shots. It was the call for the person barricaded in the bathroom, potentially causing harm. No, it was it was for well, yeah, I mean, the original call went out is that there was a subject on scene in distress that was armed going to cause harm. So obviously we want to mitigate that as fast as possible. That was what it came in. Is protocol to run right in when you get a call like that um, to wherever the school or building is that the protocol to go immediately right immediately in, in. yeah our, our response is we don't wait we do not hesitate if there's one officer on scene that one officer will go in obviously we want more officers with that officer but if if there's only one officer there that officer is going to go in and, and he's going to take care of what needs to be handled and mitigate that at what time did the first group or first officer go into the school as soon as arrival 151 they were immediately in the school there was a lieutenant on scene he told them to, he directed the men, they were going in. Can you verify whether there's metal detectors in the school? We heard there were, but I just want to double check. I don't know the answer to that. Uh, yes, there we are. have the Evolve system at all of our high schools. So everybody goes through the Evolve systems um, at intake. Um, and if for some reason they have to go back out for some doctor's appointments, what have you, they come back in, but it's same through the Evolve system. And the okay. call was made by the person in distress or someone saying there was a person in distress? No, by the person that was in distress. Okay. Twice. 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 Thank, Thank you. At Thank 2 o'clock, just want to get an idea of when kids were actually released and were they released in waves or have they all been released at this point? I'm sorry, can you read it right Dismissal is supposed to be at 2 o'clock. Just want to get an idea of when kids were released after all of this and if they've all been released from the school now or if they were released in waves. I can't give you the exact time frame, but as soon as it was all clear, we started a slow release. Was it like by hall or by classroom or? Well, they just do it. They do it systematically. Do you remember the all clear? Don't we don't know. know. We don't know that. There was another okay. false uh, 911 call coming, targeting this school last year. Um, are we seeing this happen more often where there are these false reports? And could you kind of <coughs> speak to what that does, not only in terms of the response, if this were the real thing, um, but also just I don't know. I, don't know I, I can't. I can't speak to the uh, to how many we've had. As far as I know, that um, regardless if we had them all the time, we're going to respond the way that we respond every single time. Okay. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.